So far, we've been talking about men. But notice verse 11. Without looking almost, we, we sort of skip by what Paul just dropped in there. I don't know why he put it in before verse 12. I'm not sure there's any way we can explain it, but he did. It's there. And I want you to understand verse 11 because it's such a wonderful one. Even so is the word likewise, or in like manner, the very same word as verse 8. And that indicates to us that we are now coming to a third category of people. Now, you will notice that it is translated in the authorized with some italics, even so must their wives. Let me say that I think that is an inadequate translation. In the first place, there's no word in the Greek for wives. This is the word gunaikos, which means women. And it doesn't say their women. It could say that in the Greek. There is a word for their, and the, the Apostle Paul could have said that if the Holy Spirit wanted him to say it, but he didn't. It actually says, likewise, women. That's all it says in the Greek. Likewise, women. The question is, what women? Are they the wives of the deacons, as some interpreters believe, or are they just women who also serve in the church in a deacon capacity? That's a question we have to answer, and I think it can be simply answered. The best translation here is women, because that's the translation of the word. The reason that I'm not at all uh, convinced that this could possibly be the wives of deacon, uh, of deacons is manifold. Number one, why would there be qualifications for the wives of deacons and not qualifications for the wives of elders who have an even more important responsibility? Why would he isolate the wives of deacons and not say anything at all about the wives of the overseers? Secondly, The use of likewise in verse 11 means we have a new category because it was used in verse 8 of a new category. First overseers, likewise deacons, likewise women. And this is to say to me that the church is to recognize that there is a group of women who serve in the church. If he wanted to say their women, he could have used the word their, but he didn't use it. You say, well, why didn't he use deaconesses? Because there's no Greek word for that. That's why Phoebe, a woman in Romans 16.1, is called a deacon because there's no feminine form. So the only word he could use, if he'd have used, if he'd have said likewise deacons and meant women, we never would have known he meant women because the word is not feminine. There was no word for wives, so the only word he could use was women, and the way he tells us this is a new category is with likewise. So clearly, he's introducing what I believe has come to be the deaconess in the church. I kind of prefer to call them uh, women deacons, because that, that maintains the New Testament terminology a bit better. Women deacons. He just drops this right in the middle of his discussion of deacons as a new category. And I believe that we today honor that office in our church um, in a wonderful way. God has raised up women in this church who serve. Our women deacons serve in many ways, caring for the poor, ministering to the sick in the Lord's table, in baptism, providing meals for families, involving themselves in assisting people in funerals, counseling, hospital visitation, transportation, making calls on the homes of people, uh, discipling, teaching little children. In fact, this morning I spent a little while reading through my wife's deaconess manual just to refresh my mind, and it's a, it's a great thick thing about all of the ministries of the women deacons. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and I believe its precedent is right here in the New Testament. The early church maintained it. It's come all the way down through history even to us today. And they are leaders in the church. They lead in the spiritual dimensions of service that we have identified. Now, notice their qualifications in verse 11. They parallel the deacons in verse 8. The first one is serious, the same word as in verse 8. They, too, are to have a sense of dignity and stateliness. They're to be respected. They're to sort of have an awe about them because of their spiritual devotion that makes everyone hold them in high esteem. Uh, Secondly, not diabolos. That's the word for devil, the devil. They're not to be she-devils, somebody said. Uh, they're not to be slanderers, is the, is the translation of the word. The devil, of course, is the supreme slanderer, the chief slanderer, and they're not to be his children. In other words, they're to control their tongue. The second personal character qualification in verse 8 of a deacon had to do with the tongue, and this is the second one for women. It also has to do with the tongue. They are to have a tongue that is not slanderous. Obviously, they're not to... to pervert that knowledge which they have, that information they possess, 
by slandering, gossiping, and so forth. They are to be those women who have control of their tongue. Thirdly, sober-minded. Literally, that means to abstain from wine. It's used back in verse 2 of the overseer. And again, it's a parallel to verse 8 of the deacon. He's not to be given to much wine, and uh, the women deacons are not either to be given to wine. They are to abstain in a, in a metaphorical sense to be sober in their judgment. And of course, you can't be sober in your judgment if you're not sober physically. So the parallels are there. The fourth one, faithful in all things. What does that mean? Absolutely trustworthy. Absolutely trustworthy. You say, is that a parallel? That is a parallel to verse 8. It says over there, they're not to be greedy of filthy lucre. Why? If they were greedy of filthy lucre, they couldn't be trusted with what? With money. So it's trustworthiness over here also. So those four qualifications parallel the personal character qualifications of a deacon. That's another reason why I believe we're seeing the introduction here of a whole new office with the same kind of qualifications. So God has ordained in His church that elders, bishops, and overseers be men. There is nothing dealt with here about women in that role but that among the servers, the deacons, there are men and women. 